Hello, everybody. Andrew Majeski here with Dental L. Actually, I'm just going to turn off my heater for a second. Sorry, guys. I was a little bit chilly, but it's kind of making a noise. I just realized that. Sorry. Um, okay, so let's talk about common portfolio errors that I see. And I've been um, reviewing portfolios for about five years now. So if you need help with your portfolio, you don't know if you're on the right track, you don't know where to start, or maybe you're pretty much done, but you just want somebody to look at it to make sure that you're not missing anything tiny. I can help. I will literally go through every word of your portfolio with a fine tooth comb to make sure that you're on the right track, okay? But, but just so you know, I'm not working with the CDHO. They're not endorsing me at all. So this is just something that I do on my own. Um, and I've been doing this now for about five years, helping a lot of dental hygienists with their portfolios so it's not as stressful. It's still stressful, I know, but trust me when I say you will feel so much better when it's done. Trust me, you will be so happy. But let's talk about common errors that I do see because I've already reviewed about 15 or 16 portfolios this week. There is a two week turnaround time. With the holidays, it might be three weeks. So if you want your portfolio in for me to have a look at it, please do it soon. Okay, guys, because you have to submit it by the end of January. Okay, so um, I'm just going to go into actually, actually, no, sorry, I want to keep it on this page. So I just clicked something else, but I'm going, well, actually, I can leave it here. Never mind. So one of the most common things that I see is make sure to pay attention to the year up at the top. So let me just zoom in for you guys. Sorry, how do I zoom in again? There we go. That's a little easier to see. So the upper left hand side, you guys, this is where you can change your year. Okay, so make sure to pick the year that you want to enter things into so you don't get confused. I have seen a lot of portfolios where they might be wondering why their hours aren't being counted here. It's likely because you are trying to count anything you have done for maybe 2017 or 2016 or 2015. If you have been audited this year, you are due to submit the end of January of 2020, okay? Make sure to complete your self-assessment. That's a little side note. Make sure to complete your self-assessment and don't forget about the typical day. But back to the year up here, make sure you select the proper year. So for example, I have been audited to submit my portfolio, so I will be actually submitting it soon um, because they have not been taking any submissions yet. I'll be probably submitting it in January, but you have until the end of January. But make sure to get this year correct because let's say I was putting down continuing education for 2020. That doesn't make sense because 2020 isn't here yet. Let's say I was putting down my education, my continuing education for 2015. Well, my years that they're looking at, it says right here, 2017, 2018, and 2019. Pay attention to that. Another error that I see often is, so look down here. Look at all of the different goals that are here. I have seen portfolios where there's literally four times as many as this. That's way too much, okay? Again, I could be wrong here, but I don't see the CBHO wanting to read through all of those. They prefer you have very specific um, goals in mind with a lot of activities per goal. Of course, depending on the goal. If it's a larger goal, like you want to become a restorative dental hygienist, you probably won't have a lot of activities because you'll be taking your course. That's a number of hours right there. So you might not have like 20 or 30 different activities for something like, like, like that. But um, let's say your goal is to, like, let's just use one of these. Let's say your goal is to learn about silver um, diamine and how you can use it in your mobile dental hygiene practice. Let's say that is the goal that you had picked. If you have only one activity, only one article, they're probably not going to accept that because if that's the hard work you put into learning about silver diamine fluoride, 
they don't have a lot of high hopes for you. You know, they're probably thinking, okay, she doesn't really care. She or he read one article and they think they know everything. Do we really want that dental hygienist to be applying silver diamine fluoride if they just read one article? Probably not. That's the purpose of the portfolio. They want to see that you know what you're doing. It's true. That's what they want. Okay. It's not all about how many continuing education hours you have, how many courses you have taken. It's not about that. It's about how you take those courses and learn the material and how you apply it. So that's a perfect example right there. Um, so if you have four times as many um, goals, they're going to be like, okay, she's trying too hard. What's going on here? They're probably not even going to read all of them. They will pick and choose and then hopefully they pick and choose the good ones, but that's just a lot. But on the opposite side of things, another error that I see often is somebody having um, one goal per year with a couple learning activities. That's it. You need more than that. I mean, granted, if they're really, really good and concise learning activities and, and, and everything makes sense, you might be okay, but I've never seen that happen yet where somebody might have had um, a goal per year, so, so only three goals and a couple learning activities and they pass. I haven't seen that yet. If you are listening to this and you are one of those people, let me know because I just haven't heard about it yet. Um, what else did I want to talk about while we're talking about the different goals here? Ah, yes. So let me just click one for you guys. So I'm just going to click. Oh, that's why I have it right here at the top. You guys, you see how it says, um, learning about how to maintain my professional portfolio and continuing my education to the best of my ability. That was a goal that somebody had. So I did actually put it in here as a training exercise for you guys. And, and I just picked the year 2017. Um, this goal would not be accepted because, well, it can be, but there's only one way that it's accepted, but I'll talk about that in a second. But what I'm seeing is people are putting this down as a goal but their learning activities are just simply reading the, the CDHO set of requirements. The CDHO expects you to do that anyway. So they're not going to take that as a goal because they expect you to do that anyway. They're not, they're not going to take it as a learning activity either. Now, the only way that they will accept a goal like this is if you take an actual course where you sat down in person for a full um, day. So I did ask um, somebody at the CDHO about this a couple years ago, actually. So not recently, but a couple years ago. And they had said they expect you to learn how to maintain your, your portfolio. So they're not going to really pay too much attention to that goal. And they hope that not everybody will have that because you have to do it, do it anyway. But if somebody took the time and let's say, pay two, um, two, two, $200 or whatever for an uh, in-person portfolio course, they will take that into um, um, consideration. But if you're saying that that's a 20-hour course that you did, they're not going to accept that. But if you say it's a three to six hour course, okay. If you have really um, good report on learning and how you changed your practice, they will accept it. But from my knowledge, they are not accepting a lot of people that have a goal like that of how to maintain their portfolio. They have a couple activities here and there. They're just simply not accepting it because they want you to do more. So does that make sense? If I'm not making sense somewhere, please be sure to comment below because you might have the same question as somebody else. Oops, sorry guys, I just kind of shook my whole desk there. Um, so stay away from that, okay? If you have that as a goal now, I'm not saying take it out, but make sure your you know, learning activities, your report on learning are amazing. So talking about um, report on learning, so I'm just gonna go into that goal um, actually, I should have picked an, another one for you because I don't even think I have anything in there. I might have. I can't remember. So this was like, this was a test that I did here. Okay, so I don't really have anything in there. So let me go back 
to a goal that I did actually write something for. Probably silver diamine fluoride. Because I happen to use that a lot in my practice, by the way, you guys. I do it a lot because it's the most amazing thing for kids. It is great. Okay, guys, sorry, it's just a little bit slow, I think. Okay, so when you go down, okay, I don't have anything there either. Oh, man. I want to show you guys an example of your report on learning, okay? I'll click one more. If I don't have it in here, then I'm just going to make something up. Okay, let's try the drugs one. So if you did take your exam and you passed it, make sure to count that for your hours, okay? Um, okay, because a lot of people aren't. A lot of people are saying, oh yeah, I totally forgot that I took that um, exam. But then a lot of people are saying that it took them 30 hours. Don't say that. They will only accept 15 hours because they do assume you had to study for that. So um, the 15 hours is the most that they will accept. I don't have anything here either. Okay, guys, I apologize. Sorry. Um, so I'm just going to say what I see a lot. So let's say you did take the drug exam and then you have to go down to your report on learning. What I'm seeing a lot is people are saying, um, let's see. Yes. Oops, sorry guys. Is yes. I learned, I learned about how to prescribe and then their next point form might be, um, Yes, I learned how to prescribe in my scope of practice. Yes, I learned I cannot prescribe, I don't know, let's just take something, antibiotics, antibiotics. And then for their, and this is how it's not supposed to be done, by the way, um, but I'll explain more about that in a second. But then for number four, so how did you make practice because of your learning? I've had people say, yes, I did. I can now prescribe. Okay, so this is literally all that people are writing. You know, not in these exact words, but you get the idea. Do you see how this is not very exciting? Um, somebody from the CDHO would be reading this and going, okay, she learned how to prescribe. She learned that she can prescribe within her scope of practice. Okay, she learned she can't prescribe antibiotics. Um, I hate to say it, but it sounds like a child wrote this, right? Like it's not very concise. It's not very specific. You need to go above and beyond and say things like, you know, um, let's say you learned about the different types of antibiotics and the, and the common allergies. Write that down. In fact, you guys, do I have my iPad with me? No, I don't. Um, on my iPad, I do have like the CDHO drug, what's it called? Let me look that up again. Um, the CDHO reference guide drugs in the dental hygiene practice. Reread that. Okay. Reread that. Yes. I said, reread that because <laughs> I want you to do that and then take points from that and put it in what you have learned. Cause I guarantee you, I guarantee you that you had learned more than how to prescribe and how to not prescribe antibiotics. You know, you did learn more than that. So feel free to put that in here and then changes made to your practice. Be honest. Did you actually make any changes? You know, say things like I have now printed that certificate and I put that in my operatory. I, went to my boss right away and said that I can now prescribe, you know, things like that. Okay. So make sure to have that. You, you could say I went on oral science and I had ordered, um, the chlorhexidine pres uh, prescription pads cause that's within my scope of practice, you know, say things like that, be specific. So does, does that make sense? I'm not going to say that because I don't want that in there, <laughs> but do you get the idea? You have to be specific. Um, that's a very common error that I see is people aren't specific enough in their learning activities when they're writing down what they have learned and then reports on learning. If you need more help with that, you guys, let me know. Um, I do offer a full um, online portfolio workshop where I go through all of this 
Um, if you are in that course now, awesome. Please remember to submit your portfolio to me soon so that I can look through it for you. Um, okay, so this, so this is the one that I wanted to show you guys. So this is a goal that I put in here, learning more about um, chlorhexidine. This is not a bad one, let me zoom in again, but you see how that's not very specific. It's specific to you want to learn more about chlorhexidine, but do you want to learn about it in regards to the oral cavity? Probably, but you have to be specific and say that. Do you want to learn about it um, because you heard it's toxic and you want to learn about that? Do you want to learn about different alternatives to chlorhexidine? Do you want to learn about the different types that are out there? Or do you want to learn about chlorhexidine in regards to uh, the gingival health and the types of bacteria that it, it will actually kill? Be specific. So then I want to give you guys this as well. So look at the report on learning. Look at how it's very specific. I love this. Look at how it's specific. Does everybody see that? So it does mention specific types of bacteria. It's, it does mention pretty much the facts that they would have read in these articles, these articles that they have clearly stated here. So does everybody see that? Speaking about articles again, look at how in one of the areas here, there's more than one. Another error that I see is people saying that they read one article and it took them three hours. I doubt that very much. The CHO is not going to accept that. So it's a good idea to be honest. I mean, time yourself too, but I doubt one article and to take notes took you three hours. For me to read an article, it probably takes like 10 minutes. So look at how there's multiple different articles in, in one thing, because for your articles, you have to say down here how many hours it took. You can't say 20 minutes or like 10 minutes, so it just kind of keeps everything together. And you guys notice how there's a title, there's when it was published, the authors and the link. So if you're looking online. A lot of people will put the title, they will put the author, and that's it. So the CDHO doesn't know, well, did you find that online? Did you read it? Did you know, like you need to give them more information. There's no such thing as too much information, okay? Um, and then look at how down here, did you make changes to your practice because of your learning? Very specific. So just an example, it says here, since I started as a dental hygienist, I've been recommending chlorhexidine, and my bosses always have as well, the dentist, for gingival and perio conditions, both as irrigation in office and take home prescription rinse. After discussing with a neuroscience rep at a meeting we had, blah, blah, blah. So you see how it's very specific, you guys, and it sounds personable. It doesn't sound like you copied and pasted something. I see a lot of things where it's, it's clearly copied and pasted. Don't do that. You will get in a lot of trouble. Okay. So let me know you guys, if you have any questions, I'm just going to zoom out here because that's huge. Let me know if you need help, have a look at the online portfolio workshop where I go through all of this again, and I can help you specifically because I know it's a very stressful time, but it doesn't have to be. If you can get yourself organized, that will be a game changer for you. Thank you guys so much for listening. Good luck. And I will talk to you guys very, very soon. Sorry guys, I'm just looking for my, my like link here to turn off my meeting. <laughs> this is real life, you guys, okay? I do not edit any of my videos. That's a perfect way to tell you guys right now. Where did it go, you guys? This is hilarious. Okay, I see it on here, but then it's missing. Oh, here we go, you guys. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Bye. <laughs>